Hi, Phil Plate from BadAstronomy.com here. My friend Tina Anderson is a teacher at the Sagert 6th grade center in Austin, Texas. And when she told her students that she had a friend who was an astronomer, they decided they had a ton of questions. So she collected all the questions from all the students in her school and sent them to me to answer on camera. So let's see what we've got. Why are you called the bad astronomer? Well, my mom hates that, but actually it's because I deal with bad astronomy, myths and misconceptions about astronomy. People who think the moon landings were faked, or you can stand an egg on end on the first day of spring, things like that. And I correct these misconceptions on my website. So I'm not a bad astronomer, at least I don't think so. It's just that I deal with bad astronomy, so that's why I call myself that. Have I ever been to space and do I want to go? Well, I'd love to be in space. How cool would it be to be able to float in orbit around the Earth and to be able to, to throw food up in the air and just you know throw it right at your mouth and have it shoot right into your mouth and all that kind of stuff? That would be so much fun. The problem is, I'm terrified of getting into a rocket. I don't even like going on roller coasters. So being on a rocket is not really something I'd want to do. But on the other hand, you know, there are other people who love that sort of thing. I know a few astronauts and they love it. They can't wait to get into space. And so uh, maybe you'll get into space someday. You know, that's something you can really try to do. You just got to stay in school, study, work really hard. And if you're interested in that sort of thing, you can apply to be an astronaut. And maybe someday you'll walk on the moon. Do I think aliens are real? Well, I think there are aliens out there, but I don't know this for a fact, and, and here's why. When I was your age, we didn't even know if there were planets orbiting other stars. But starting in 1995, astronomers discovered planets, planets orbiting other stars. Now, these are giant planets like Jupiter, and we, we don't think there can be life like us on them. But the fact that we've discovered other planets means that they can form. There are other planets orbiting other stars. And that means that there must be millions and millions and millions of planets out there just in our galaxy. And there are billions of galaxies in the universe. So just from the sheer numbers, it seems really, really likely that they're aliens. Now, are they visiting us? I don't think so. I think that if there were aliens coming here in spaceships, we'd have much, much better evidence than blurry photos and, and terrible video and that sort of thing. Uh, maybe someday, you know, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence is a program that actually uses radio waves, big radio telescopes, to try to, to pick up signals from alien life. And it's possible that one day they'll, they'll detect alien life out in space. That would be really, really exciting. But for now, we just don't have that evidence. But I'm hoping soon we'll find a planet like Earth orbiting another star. And if we do that, that'll make the chances a lot better that aliens exist. This is one of my favorite questions. If I were a scientist, what area would I work in? Well, I am a scientist. I'm actually an astronomer. I have a degree in astronomy. I did research for several years using Hubble Space Telescope and some other projects. Um, but I decided that I had more fun writing about astronomy, talking about astronomy to kids. It's, uh, it's really cool to do scientific research and you, it's really exciting and you can learn so much about the universe. But it's also a lot of fun, especially for people like me, to just to talk about it and write about it and to excite other people about it. And I decided that's what I'm best at and that's what I want to do. Could there be life on Mars or any other planet? What planet do I think is the most likely candidate, other than Earth, to have extraterrestrial life? Well, Mars is a big target for looking for life. A long time ago, a billion years ago, Mars had water on its surface. We've seen a lot of evidence of that. And we think that life can arise when there's water. And so that's a good place to look. And NASA and, and other space agencies have been building space probes and detectors to, to land on Mars, to orbit around Mars, and, and look for signs of life. And it's possible we'll find it. And I think that if we do, my opinion, is that Mars may have had life a long time ago, but doesn't anymore. So we may find evidence that there was life a billion years ago, two billion years ago, something like that. But it sure would be exciting if we found evidence for life now, if there were bacteria or something like that on Mars now. But Mars isn't the only place to look. There's a moon of Jupiter called Europa, 
which is basically a, a big ball of ice. And underneath that ice shell, which is maybe several miles thick, there could be an ocean. The whole moon might just be an ocean that has a frozen surface on top of it. And there's a lot of talk of sending a probe there that would dig down through the ice and go into the ocean and look for life there. There's a moon of Saturn called Enceladus, which is a lot like Europa, and it too might have life in a sort of an underground ocean. And um, Saturn's largest moon, Titan, has a very thick atmosphere made of methane. And there's a lot of what are called organic compounds, carbon-based molecules there. And we think that those are the basis of life as well. And it's possible there's life on Titan. So there are lots of places in our solar system we might be able to find life. The thing to do is to go there and find out. We need to spend the money and build these machines and send them there and, and look for signs of life. And then maybe someday we'll send people there and then we'll really be able to look really hard to see if, if we're really alone in the solar system or not. Even if we find bacteria, that would be a huge discovery and would be very cool. Will humans ever live on the moon or on Mars? Yes. Yes, yes, we will. Uh, NASA is looking to put people back on the moon, maybe by around the year 2020, something like that, and eventually put colonists, you know, on Mars, to send people to Mars to actually live there. That will take a long time. Mars is a long way away and it's pretty hard to get there. But the moon is pretty close. It's only about three days away by rocket. And so who knows, by the time you're in your 30s, you graduate from college, you might be living on the moon. What's my favorite planet? Well, that's easy. It's Earth. It's because we live here and I like it here. It's pretty and it has air and we can breathe and all, and all that sort of thing. But if you mean a planet besides Earth, I'd have to say Saturn, simply because Saturn's got those magnificent rings. And even through a small telescope, which is the kind of telescope I had when I was a kid, a really inexpensive, junky you know, lens, telescope with a lens about that big, um, still, you can see Saturn's rings, and it's really, really beautiful. And now that we're sending probes to Saturn, like the Cassini probe, it is returning unbelievably beautiful pictures of Saturn, its rings, and its moons. And so I think if you talk to most astronomers, they'd agree that Saturn's their favorite planet. Pluto, planet or not? Good question. Um, we have a definition of what a planet is. Now, personally, I think defining what a planet is is kind of silly. It's really, really hard to do. But there is a group of people, a part of the International Astronomical Union, a group of professional astronomers, and they made us a, a list, basically. A planet is this and this and this and this. And by those definitions, Pluto's not a planet anymore. And I kind of agree. By any real definition of what a planet is, even if you make really vague ones, Pluto's not really a planet. It's really small. It looks more like a giant chunk of ice. And there are thousands and thousands of these Pluto-like objects that have been found outside of Pluto's orbit. And it looks like Pluto is just one of the bigger ones of these. There'll probably be bigger ones that we'll find later, much farther away, much, much farther out from the sun. So really, I think Pluto shouldn't be a planet. But still, again, Defining what a planet is is really tough. So I think if you want to think of Pluto as a planet, go ahead. But it's by definition, by what we officially call a planet, it's not.